So I, yeah, I've been a mentor, a, a, a writing mentor, probably since 2019, and I really do love the process of helping somebody kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cheesy to say, but helping them make their dream come true. But a lot of it is also just, I love that ability of picking out what's working and what's not working in, in somebody's manuscript. Um, for me, it's important to give back because as a marginalized writer myself, I would have loved to have that at the beginning of my career. And I know how important it is for other, other writers who come from marginalized backgrounds to find someone who is willing to work with them on their craft and on their, um, on their books and such without it being about the fact that we're all marginalized. They just want somebody who's been through what I've been through. And then, of course, after helping them with their book, I like to continue to help them with their career and get, help them out with um, really understanding what the industry is like for, for people that are in the kind of the marginalized parts of the world. Really understand what, uh, what challenges we have that is different from others. Um, and because I've gone through it with several publishers, I feel like it's something that I should be wanting to give back. Teaching people has been always something that I've done. I was a teacher for a while. It's always, I've done tons of corporate training and adult training. I was a therapist. So I feel like I can take all of that stuff in my past life and bring it to writers. And it's such a joy to be able to go into a bookstore and see a book that I helped somebody, um, help somebody not only with the book itself, but help them navigate the career, their career and the publisher and all that, and see that on the shelf, and it feels really good. The advice I'd give to anyone who's interested in the industry is, first of all, you have to finish a book. That is, I think, the biggest advice I have, is people always say, oh, I always wanted to write a book. I'm like, okay, so write it. Like, that is the first step. And it's not, definitely not the easiest step, but it's the first one. I think the, the thing that has really helped me is, is adaptability. Um, be thick-skinned enough to be able to take the crit criticism. They're not criticizing you as a person. It's the work, and there's always room to grow. Even in, like, a New York Times bestseller, there's always room to grow. So understand that rejection and critique and all that is part of the job. It's not something terrible that happens. It's just part. It, it's unfortunately something that we all have to deal with, and all authors do. Um, so I think the persistence is probably the key. Uh, keep trying, throw some new spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. Finding your voice is something that uh, is, is a very tricky thing to do. I, I, can, I can help an author keep their voice. Like if, if, if I'm critiquing their manuscript and I find that their voice is inconsistent, I can help them with that, but I can't help them necessarily in finding it themselves. I think the, the voice, you'll know when you've found your voice when you find that the words flow a little bit easier. You'll find that you're not, you're not struggling as much, um, you're not forcing it. And I think the, the way to, to do that is to just be flexible and try different things and try different kinds of stories, maybe try even different genres. And then read widely. Don't just read, I mean, obviously read the kind of thing that you want to write, but read more than that. Read things in different genres and different uh, age categories and read as much as you possibly have time for. And I think that can help you hone what it, your unique voice is. So when I was started writing, there were all these new programs that I heard about very, very soon after I started writing, different ways of connecting with the agent. The one that I ended up using was called DV Pit, which was a Twitter pitch party. So there's several different Twitter pitch parties out there, and it's ways, it's just another way that you can connect with an agent. So DV Pit is specifically for marginalized creators, so members of um, racial minority groups or um, LGBTQ plus or people with uh, different disability statuses. And basically, the way that all Twitter pitches work is you tweet a pitch to your book, what your book is about in like two sentences, along with some genre tags, so whether it's contemporary romance or, or whether it's women's fiction or whatever. And the agents um, who are participating will scroll through the Twitter feed of everybody with that DV pit hashtag. And the ones that they want to see more of um, they will like it, and then you basically you prepare your query and you send it to them. So it can help you get ahead of the pack a little bit of the querying uh, line, so to speak, but it can also um, give you a little bit of buzz because it's, other people are going to read those, those pitches as well. Uh, it can be very competitive. There can be a lot of those. One of the bigger 
Um, one of the bigger Twitter pitch parties, PitMad, has thousands and thousands and thousands of, query, of, of these pitches going through it all day. It will always be trending on whatever day it's happening because there's so much of it happening. So sometimes it can be hard to be seen because there's so many, but if you have a really good pitch, then it, your, the agent will, will see it and want to see more. If you don't want to go through one of those uh, Twitter parties, you could just query the old-fashioned way we say. Um, basically, you would send the query letter to uh, the agent. And a query letter is a very specific format of a letter. It is a way to sell your book to show, um, to show the agent that, that this book is not only marketable, but well-written and good enough to be published. So it follows a specific format where you have to uh, basically, it's it's the blurb is the the back cover copy basically of a book, so that is what you would put in there about what your book's about, and then what the genre is, what the word count is, and things like that. So your housekeeping things. So you would send it to an agent, usually through a portal called Query Manager, is what most of them use now, but some still do um, through email. Um, and then if the agent wants to see more of the book, then they will ask to see more pages than you already sent, like they would ask to see the whole thing or the first 50 pages. And then once once the agent has read the whole book, if they're interested, they will contact you and you'll have a phone call and you'll be able to hear more about their vision for your book and they will offer to represent you. I didn't take, it didn't take me that long to, to get an agent. After DV Pitt, I think it was I sent her the query like the next day and then she asked to see the rest of the manuscript. I sent her the rest of the manuscript. I think it was um, maybe a month before I had an offer. And then what happens then is that you would send uh, a note to all the other agents who are currently reading or using, reading the whole manuscript or have a query. And you would, um, they have a chance to decide if they also want to offer you representation. They have two weeks to decide if they want to offer, also offer. So I ended up with more than one offer of representation. I went with the first agent that had contacted me, but I think I think it went a little bit faster for me than for others. And it was probably because of that Twitter pitch event that I didn't have to wait how long it normally takes to get a response for a query. Getting the agent really is the first hurdle in publishing, so it is very it's very difficult to get because obviously all there are a lot of aspiring authors and so it's very difficult to, to cross that first hurdle but once you're there then the agent is your partner through the process and they'll um, they'll be the ones that uh, submit your manuscript to publishers to get you a, a to get you a contract and they'll negotiate the contract and they'll be your partner along the way because querying is so competitive um, I think the I think a lot of newer writers underestimate how much research you need to do into it. Agents get on probably on average 2000 or so queries a year and out of those 2000 or so queries they may take on 3 to 5 new clients a year. So the chance of of getting your foot in the door with an individual agent is very difficult. To to get to the top of the pack there, um, your query needs to be as good as you can possibly make it and you need to follow the the requirements, so you need to follow the, the normal uh, format for a query with um, that blur being this many words and the, uh, the housekeeping bit looking like that. So following the query requirements, as I think is the thing that most people don't realize how important it is. Um, and that also goes for the book itself, the genre requirements for word count, for example. Um, I've heard of writers trying to get um, an agent on a book that is twice as long as what the average book of that genre is and that's not going to go anywhere because they're looking to place books that are similar to the books that are out there because those are proven success stories. So I think that's another mistake that people make. They think they, um, maybe they think their book is so so amazing and so great that they don't need to follow the rules but when there's that much competition out there, following the rules is the only way to get noticed. Scrivener is especially helpful for when I'm in that, that point where I'm editing because I can move things around easily. I don't use a lot of the features in Scrivener, but another the writing book that I use the most is probably Romancing the Beat, which is a story structure for specifically for the romance arc of the story. So I use that a lot as well. Um, and then I use the 
uh, emotion thesaurus, which is kind of like a, like a little bit of like writer's cheating notes. Um, it really helps kind of conceptualize um, emotions and what emotions are related to each other. So if I know how the character is supposed to be feeling then, I can use that book to help me think of different ways of saying it or different ways of showing it so it's not, I'm not using the same crutches over and over again. Mm -hmm.